All right, what's up, YouTube? We're live. How's it going, guys? <clears throat> okay. Welcome, everybody. I uh, hope your week is going well. So let's see where to start. <clears throat> I'm going to be teaching a free workshop next week. Uh, next week, next Friday, a week from tomorrow, I'm teaching my free male sexual mastery secrets uh, online workshop. <clears throat> I'm going to be going into how to overcome premature ejaculation, how to boost your sexual energy, how to have non-ejaculatory orgasms, how to last longer in bed, and how to channel your sexual energy into creating abundance and purpose in your life. So again, that's my male sexual mastery secrets online training. It's going to be next Friday, July 2nd. Uh, there's a link on this YouTube video to sign up for that. It's free. Spaces are limited though, so make sure you sign up soon. Uh, and there's a link in my Instagram profile to sign up for that. So that's what's going on. <clears throat> uh, exciting times. I'm uh, heading out next week. Uh, next week, I'm heading to Texas and Oklahoma to meet up with a friend of mine. We're writing a book together about sexual energy and uh, creating abundance, you know, kind of law of attraction stuff. So I'm excited about that. And after that, I'm heading to North Carolina for two weeks to study with Michael Wynn at his summer retreat, doing some powerful internal alchemy. And then after that, I'm heading to Sedona, where I'm teaching a workshop at the Family Gathering of Light on sexual kung fu and sexual energy. So, uh, yeah, lots lots going on this summer. It's going to be a busy month of July. I'm going to be traveling. So, And also, <clears throat> Multi-Orgasmic Man, my 12-week online course is opening up soon, so stay tuned for that. So, hey, Nikola Das, what's up, brother? Uh so first of all, I want to talk about um, energetic sex. This is something I, I posted about on my Instagram yesterday. So we're all pretty familiar with physical sex, right? But energetic sex, we could also call it soul sex, is really ultimately a more fulfilling experience because physical sex is mostly limited to this genital experience. It's like we're, we're attempting, you know, sex is, it's, it's almost a bit of a merging with another being, right? And but we have our limitations physically. We can't completely merge with someone physically. And there's always this degree of uh, almost unfulfillment sometimes when you only have this lustful physical approach to sex. It's always a very up down, you know, especially for men when you're having an ejaculatory orgasm. It's like in the beginning, there's all this uh, desire, that arousal, that sharp peak up and arousal. And then you ejaculate and it's, you know, hormonal low, uh, energetic low, and you have to recover. And so you want more of that short-lived high that you have from that five second peak orgasm, but you can't, you have to recover. So the more, you know, you get stuck in this pattern, it's very unfulfilling and you're always trying to get more of that. It's, it becomes this kind of addictive pursuit for this fleeting experience. Transitioning into a more, uh, we could say integrated, energetic, full, full body, full being experience of sexual connection, where it's not just this genital centered experience, but you are through internal practices, um, you were basically wiring your sexual experience and opening up to expanding it to connect with all the other centers of the body. You can sexually connect from all centers of your body on some level, right? <clears throat> but mostly we're, we're limited to this genital expression of sexual connection. So opening up this flow of sexual energy upward by opening your, your energy channels, integrating the sexual energy by doing practices to circulate it through your body and really wire that expression of sex into the higher uh, centers of the body, like the heart, you know, the third eye, the crown. Um, you start to have a more energetic experience of sex. So you're having physical sex, but also uh, energetically, you're exchanging information. You're connecting from the heart, you know, getting to this higher resonance of love. The frequency of the heart has this very expansive uh, uh, this lightning energy, right? When you're only experiencing this lustful expression of sex, it's a very dense energy and it wants to, it wants to sink down in your body and be pulled out of you and ejaculate out. And, that, and that's fine, but if that's what you want, but it's difficult to have these higher experiences of sex, non-ejaculatory orgasms, full body orgasms, when you're only stuck in that root level of lust, right? So raising it up into this vibration of love, it lightens that sexual energy and makes it very easy to move through your body and have deeper experiences of orgasm. And the benefit to this is when you get into this more energetic experience of sex, because you're doing meditative practices, you're doing Qigong, you're, you're, you're gaining your sensitivity and your awareness of the subtle energy channels of the body and your ability to circulate with them, you can directly connect to your partner's energy channels and you, you basically merge your energy bodies together. You can completely merge energetically. And that's where the most fulfilling experiences in my, you know, my experience 
have been in this energetic merging with someone else. It's uh, this is the experience of like this true union. It becomes this experience of oneness. It's like you completely merge with that person. This is, you know, you hear people talk about finding God through sex. They, they kind of talk about in Tantra. For me, it's like this becoming one with the universe by this sex is a polarity. And when two polarities meet and connect in this way, they neutralize each other and you, you experience this neutral Yuan Chi, the Taoists call it this, this, this pure state of oneness and bliss completely in the moment. And, you know, it, it's hard to describe, but that's the, the cosmic orgasmic, energetic soul sex orgasm experience. It's, it's quite phenomenal. And this, I think this is what we all, uh, on some level, we subconsciously know that this is possible through sex, but we've forgotten how to do this because through our conditioning, through media, through porn, we only experience this, again, this lustful expression of sex, which is very heavy. It's very draining. It pulls our energy out of us. So intuitively, we know that there's more to sex. There's, there's this higher connection to sex, and we all crave that, but um, we've forgotten how. We've been closed. You know, We've been cut off from our this connection between our brains, our hearts, and our sexual center has been severed. So these things are all disconnected. So it, it's very confusing for us, right? So doing the work, opening up your energy channels, getting this more energetic experience of sex so you can completely merge with someone is such a deep, fulfilling, and healing experience. You know, and this is, it's very transformational. And once you've had this experience, you're not going to want to go back to this, you know, sitting on porn tube for hours, jerking off. Uh, just wasting your sexual energy. It just it just doesn't appeal anymore. At least it didn't for me once I started having these experiences. So, uh, yeah, this is what sexual kung fu is all about: is getting these higher levels of connection, these higher levels of orgasm, and really having this embodiment of of, of bliss, of pleasure. A lot of spiritual paths are kind of based on escapism, really. Like, trying, okay, Earth's a piece of shit. Your body's this awful thing. You need to get out, get out of your crown, go up to heaven, get out of this place. But you know, in my opinion, experience is about bringing heaven to earth, bringing, you know, embodying all this bliss and all this pleasure into your physical body, grounding that, connecting it to heaven, connecting it to earth. And that's the ultimate human experience, you know, for me. So yeah, once again, guys, those of you who just joined, uh, I'm teaching a free online training next Friday, male sexual mastery secrets. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be really, really amazing. I'm going to be teaching how to have non-ejaculatory orgasms, how to last for hours in bed, how to channel your sexual energy into creating abundance in your life. So check it out. Sign up for that. There's a link in this YouTube video. There's a link in my Instagram profile. Next Friday. Okay, guys, I'm going to answer some questions. So feel, feel free to send your questions in Q and a session here. Thanks everyone for joining, by the way, it's always good to see you guys. Good to hang out, you know, and uh, just uh, share our energy in a way, right? Okay. Soul Immortal. What's up, brother? says, hey, bro, I'm tripping on LSD right now. <laughs> I was wondering if you could explain further how psychedelics drain your gene energy. I tripped after a long time for some introspection inspiration. Okay, so I'm not an extremist. I'm not like, you know, never, ever, you know, have LSD, never have, never smoke marijuana, whatever. Uh, there's a time and place for these kinds of things, right? But it is important to understand that any kind of psychoactive substance, anything that puts you into a kind of a heightened, altered state, <clears throat> it burns up some of your gene to do this. Your gene is your physical essence, right? It changes your own chemistry of your body. You know, I noticed once I began practicing Qigong that when I would have, you know, uh, some weed or something, some you know, cannabis, psychoactive substances, magic emotions, whatever, I noticed that it made me feel very, very depleted afterwards. And it's very apparent that it was burning up my body's vital energy because it, it, it seems like it kind of fuels this conversion of gene to qi to shen, which is kind of this alchemical, process that it's always happening, but it can be accelerated through internal alchemical practice. But with psychoactive substances, it can be a bit uh, unbalanced in a way and that it can really burn up your gene. And if it's like every now and then it's okay. Obviously the benefit of taking these mind altering substances is that you can experience a uh, very, very accelerated growth in a short period of time. It's an alchemy, right? But you pay for it with your own vital energy. So as long as it's like an occasional thing, you have a healthy lifestyle, it's not going to be a big deal. But if you start to become reliant on these things, if you're doing it like every weekend, regularly, you're not taking time to integrate your experience, it can become, you know, an addiction just like anything else. So it's about, you know, being clear. What is your purpose for doing it? Are you just trying to get high? Are you trying to escape your daily life? Or are you legitimately on a quest to gain some insight and some evolution, right? So, you know, only you can 
to decipher what's right and wrong for you. I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong for you. I'm just say, sharing my own experience. My evolution of this has been that, you know, again, my initial spiritual awakening actually came from taking psychedelics. I took some magic mushrooms, had a full blown Kundalini experience, completely changed my life. And I was like, okay, I just need to like take psychedelics <laughs> for my spiritual path. So I did it again and I could never quite have that same experience. It just became a very hellish experience. You know, when I, when I took the drugs again, and that's what led me to practice, uh, natural, uh, natural methods, technologies of bringing myself into altered states without substances. So got me into yoga, got me into meditation, eventually Qigong, Taoist practices, sexual Kung Fu. And what I found was through these practices, I was able to get into those same heightened states of clarity, of flow, of inspiration, of evolution, but without, you know, some of the chaotic side effects, you know, bad trips, uh, again, the depletion that I found following these things. So, you know, for me, uh, that's my path now is meditation, Qigong, you know, that's why I, that's why I love this stuff. And also, man, the vibration of the planet right now, the energy is hitting the planet. It's, it's kind of like living in a psychedelic trip right now. I'm sure you guys are feeling this, that just things are transforming like crazy. Uh, lots of energy just bombarding us, you know, weather changes, planetary changes. So much is changing. It's, it's an exciting time really, but it can be quite chaotic if you don't really understand what's going on. So, you know, keeping yourself balanced, uh, grounding, spending time in nature, integrating all the, the changes occurring and it's great. Uh, North Carolina, I'm going to be in Asheville, North Carolina. Well, actually I'm going to be staying in a cabin about 20 minutes outside of Asheville, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be pretty busy with the, the retreat. I'm going to be that be at for two weeks, but yeah, if you're in Asheville, hit me up and maybe we could meet up. Okay. Sebastian says, would you consider eroticism or sexual fantasies for a solo practice session, a good tool to build arousal and sexual energy? I don't recommend external materials like porn pictures, visual stimulation. It's very overstimulating. You know, my practice evolved from, uh, I, I kind of noticed this, or I was having a chat with, with, uh, some friends of mine. I was talking about how my own evolution of, you know, sexual experience, sexual cultivation has evolved from being very centered on like visual stimulation, like looking, whether that was from porn or even during sex, just like, Oh, visual stimulation, which, you know, we, we men are pretty, often pretty big on, right? Which really gets us up in our head and it can be overstimulating. So kind of transition for me, it's been transitioning out of that and more to feeling inner listening, right? King Jin, the Taoist call where you're feeling what's happening. So, uh, I, I, what I'm getting at here is that again, I don't recommend external stimulation like porn or things like that, but using a bit of fantasy, if you require to build arousal in the beginning can be, you know, that's fine, but don't rely on it too much. What you want to do is once is, is learn to build arousal without requiring excessive fantasy. This is often because of, you know, our, the way porn conditioned our, our brain chemistry, our arousal response to be it requiring overstimulation basically. And so being able to transition out of that to simply we're feeling, you know, sensations, pleasure in your body, is enough to, to keep you aroused. And also when, when you're trying to have, you know, get into expanded states of orgasm, uh, full body orgasms, non ejaculatory orgasms, the quality of lust is very difficult to get there with. It usually pushes you towards ejaculation. So focus on when you're in a sexually highly aroused state, moving energy through your body, focus on really high vibrational feelings like love, bliss, compassion. Think about really, really happy memories and just bring that vibration as you're stimulating your sexual energy and you will get into a very different experience of orgasm. And it's quite amazing, honestly. <clears throat> Tom Knight says, how often should you work out? It depends what kind of workouts you're talking about. You know, uh, but if you're talking about like uh, physical exercise, hard physical exercise for me, I go to the gym and do my workouts three days a week um, more than that. And I, uh, you know, I like to get you, you want plenty of rest to, you know, working out too much can be just as harmful as not working out at all. Right. Overtraining. So giving your time, your body time to adjust and rest. Plus, I'm doing two, three hours of Qigong <laughs> internal practices every day yoga. So I'm very, very uh, active, very athletic. But yeah, for me, intense physical exercises three times a week is is my you know sweet spot. <clears throat> okay, Wa Wakunate twelve. 
not sure if I'm saying that right, on Instagram says, hey man, can you say something about the lack of sexual desire and erection problems? Low sexual libido probably, right? Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually releasing a video on YouTube and I'll post on IGTV too soon uh, about uh, basically how to boost your sexual vitality. And so the, the main things you wanna look at in your life, if you're experiencing low libido, weak erections, um, this is probably a pattern of depletion, right? Stress is number one. Are you stressed out? Are you getting enough sleep? Do you have quiet, restful time in your life? If not, you wanna prioritize that. Spending time in nature, doing calming things, doing things that nourish you, extremely important. Uh, in Chinese medicine, our sexual potency is, a function, is related to our kidney energy, the kidneys, which uh, the Chinese considered the kidney system to, to include all basically all the water uh, functions in the body, the water elements. So the genitals, the kidneys, the adrenals, the blood, the bone marrow, these are all part of the kidney system, hormones. And the kidney system, it doesn't like over overactivity, basically. Too much work, too much thinking, too much achieving, right? It burns out your gene, your sexual energy. So again, rest and recovery is very, very important. Practicing Qigong will help you to boost your sexual energy. Check out my Qigong playlist on YouTube. Healthy diet is very important. Getting all of your minerals. Minerals are huge. Uh, minerals are the foundation for hormones in the body. So if you're deficient in minerals in your diet, which is easy now that, you know, the world of genetically modified foods, which are basically devoid of any nutrients, uh, depleted soil, it can be difficult to get minerals. So finding a good quality source of natural minerals is very important for Hormonal health, I recommend uh, TJ Clark has a product it's called Legendary Colloidal Formula. It's got a bunch of minerals in it. It's a great more uh, uh, mineral supplement. But the most important minerals for male sexual health, hormone support, are uh, zinc, zinc's number one, magnesium, boron, and selenium. Um, staying hydrated, some testosterone boosting, kidney boosting uh, herbs, like goji berries, black sesame seeds, he show woo, uh, American ginseng. These are all supportive of that sexual potency, pine pollen <clears throat> and avoiding uh, we're bombarded with toxic products, right? The chemical castration of the planet from poisoned food supplies. There's our, our foods, processed foods are literally placed, are literally laced with poisons, xenoestrogens, chemicals that mock estrogen in the body. The body absorbs it as, as if it was estrogen. It, it, Suppresses testosterone levels. This is why men in the world are becoming castrated, basically. Testosterone levels are plummeting from plastics, from, again, toxic foods. Eat organic, eat fresh foods that are natural, found the way they are in nature. Avoid EMF. Never keep your cell phone in your pocket. So these are just some, you know, lifestyle strategies to improve your sexual potency. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <clears throat> Omar says, how long do you meditate per day? Uh, usually about an hour. I, I do about an hour of meditation in my morning practice. And I do, you know, two hours of Qigong, Tai Chi, internal energy practices. Majin Wolf says, hey, Jonathan, I bought your digital course bundle and the sexual Kung Fu workout. You have an exercise where I have to squeeze the pelvic floor really hard. Do you still recommend doing that? Okay, so the pelvic floor squeezing, excuse me, um, yeah, so this was an older training. I've been meaning to add a little update in there, kind of integrating how I teach it now. The most updated practice is my 12-week course, Ultragasmic Man. But overall, how I integrate pelvic floor squeezing now is only during, um, not during direct stimulation. So you can use it during the big draw practice. I still do that occasionally. Uh, less force, the pelvic floor squeezing, more effortlessness, but you can do that just to draw the energy up. But during active sex, I do not recommend squeezing the pelvic floor anymore. You can use reverse Kegels and pelvic floor relaxation. That's what I'm stressing more towards or squeezing the butt cheeks together. Right. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to add some updates to those, you know, my basic training products on my website to more how I'm teaching it now. I did use those methods for years with success. But again, what I'm finding is that squeezing the pelvic floor overall tends to create this hypertension, which can increase premature ejaculation. Krishna R3 says, good to see you, John. I wanted to ask your opinion on Wi-Fi or any wireless connection and Bluetooth earphones. Do you use a smartphone with less SAR value to stay away from the radiation? Yeah, so EMF pollution, right? Uh, I use Organite. 
and uh, black tourmaline and shungite on devices around my house, which mitigates that EMF radiation. So my Wi-Fi router, it's actually in this room. I have a really big uh, organite plate, which I put it on. Term or, or I think it's tourmaline, but definitely shungite has been proven by Russian scientists to absorb about or, or reduce, I, I think like 85 to 95% of EMF radiation from devices. So I put it near all of my electronic devices. My phone, um, I never have it on in my pocket. I don't put it on my pocket. Yeah, I obviously have my phone here, but, and I also have this little, little mini organite blocker that I'll often, if you know, put around my electronic devices. But yeah, uh, I use organite and stones that kind of eat EMF to reduce that for me. I recommend you guys do the same. And turn your turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Like, there's no reason for it to be on. You know, when you're sleeping, it just blasts you and cuts your telomeres in half. Okay, Courtney Creator asks: If one can last during personal sexual cultivation, but not during sex, would you say that is because of anxiety? There could be many factors. Um, could be just you know having difficulty integrating that into sex. Uh, anxiety is very very common. You start thinking about it too much. You get in your head, and you know uh, that's gets you in fight or flight mode, right? So learning to relax a bit more, obviously integration into partner practice is another another aspect of training, right? Everyone's gonna have diff their varying degrees of success in the beginning with this, but overall focus on relaxing. Relaxation is number one, feel the rest of your body. Don't worry about, you know, don't worry about it. First of all, when you, when you start worrying about, oh God, am I gonna last long? You know, you're already up in your head, your energy's rising. So relaxation, focusing on the deep breathing, um, something else I was going to say, but also your partner can have a very, you know, strong effect on this. If your partner's a woman, make sure that she is very, very aroused before you insert your penis. Basically, if the woman's not in a state of high arousal, you know, her, her vagina is not well, you know, moist, wet, uh, then she's not fully ready basically. And there can be this tendency for her body to kind of pull on your, your young energy because hers isn't really there yet. Right. So that's another factor. Omar Kalim says, I tried holding in my semen and it was very difficult, especially during sex. How can I improve holding in the load? Work with your microcosmic orbit. You need somewhere to move all that pressure that's building up. Staying relaxed is number one, deep breathing, but microcosmic orbit, it needs space to flow in your body as it builds up. When you have all this extra space in your body because your energy channels are open because you practice Qigong, you practice meditation, then it becomes really easy during sex for, you know, to have all this much more space to hold that arousal, right? So practice, 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 basically. Okay, Lucas asks, about solo cultivation, your mind tries to make you picture other women while you try to picture your lover during practice, and that creates a feeling of guilt. How to deal with that? Well, stop, you know, <laughs> stop creating the images of other women in your mind. You know, just don't buy into it. It's like, you know, our mind has all these, uh, the Taoists talk about the monkey mind, and there's all these seeds of thoughts that are constantly popping up in our minds. You know, you'll notice like, oh, this new thought, this new thought. And when you start to focus on them, they start, it's like watering these seeds and they start to grow and you're on these thought loops. So. Train yourself to not buy into every thought that comes into your mind. I actually have a practice of this on my YouTube channel, how to meditate. Um, but basically, strengthen your mind so you're not focusing on things you don't want to focus on. You know, this comes down to controlling your mind. What about liver? Uh, liver, and I think we're, because I was talking about kidney energy being basically your sexual vitality. In Chinese medicine, the litter, the litter, the liver is the mobilizer. So the liver, liver chi is really re related to spreading the sexual energy, making it move. This very much ties into erection. So erection and your, your erections can be linked to your liver energy. Maybe it can also be, you know, your circulation, your hormone levels. There's a lot of factors to it, but uh, wood energy, morning wood, right, right. And that's why in the morning we are so aroused. Our sexual energy is so high. That's kind of the time that the liver chi, the rising wood energy is most active. 
But overall, for sexual vitality, kidney energy is number one. You know, that, that, that's the most common ailment people have in this world is their kidneys, their adrenals are depleted. Kidneys are like the battery of your body. <clears throat> CJP says, hey, John, I did solo cultivation, but the next day I felt drained with brain fog and quite tired. I did not ejaculate. What did I do wrong? I mean, there could be a lot of factors to this, right? Was anything else different about your day? <clears throat> Personally, I feel quite charged up after sexual cultivation, but everyone's going to be a little different. It could also be that, you know, what happens is when you're doing any sort of energetic practice, especially with sexual energy, the energy can start to like feed, you know, kind of... Uh, get things moving in your body. So if you have these deep patterns of depletion and exhaustion because you've been overstimulated, then it can actually start to bring more yin into your system, which you need. And you may uh, experience that as feeling a bit more tired, right? Feeling a bit, you know, what, what's, what appears to be being drained, but it's actually your system starting to charge itself back up because you've been depleted for a while. I'm not sure if this is the case or not. It's difficult to say, but, you know, maybe look at this and, and see if that resonates. Omar says, how long, how often do you work out? How intense are your workouts? <clears throat> so physical exercise, again, I, I work out three days a week. Uh, I've been doing pretty, pretty intense workouts. So I've been doing, uh, at the gym, I go to the gym. I've been doing squats every workout, 20 rep squats where I do is pretty heavy weight, right? And I do 20 reps, like as much as I would normally only do for like 10 reps, I do 20 reps for it, you know, taking deep, a lot of intense breaths between each one. And like, by the time I get to 20, I feel like I'm going to pass out. So that's how I start my workout. And then I do my full other workout, which, you know, I do like push, push motions, bench presses, shoulder presses, uh, pull, pull day, you know, rows, pull ups, things like that. And then I do 15 minutes or so of cardio, you know, on the elliptical after that. So about an hour, hour, hour and 20 minutes workouts, pretty intense. I'm usually pretty wiped out for an hour or so after that. So that's been, that's been my workout re recently and a leg day as well. A Google user says, Hey, what do you think about alcohol? Is it a real poison or is it something normal to drink? Alcohol is definitely a poison. Uh, I personally choose not to touch it. You know, if, if you enjoy alcohol now and then that's fine. But if you're having it every day, you want to, you really want to look at this pattern. Uh, alcohol, I mean, I don't, I don't go too in this, but yeah, I haven't touched alcohol in six years because I realized it just made me feel like shit. Um, it just made me, it lowers your vibration. It numbs you. It kind of, you know, it's a, it's kind of, a, it's a toxin to your body. It, it, it alters the way that you think and you behave. It, it just kind of numbs you and puts this cloud around you. And, you know, a little more esoterically, it opens you up to influence from more unseen forces. That's why uh, they call them, you know, alcohol spirits, right? Because it, it was understood in ancient times when you drink alcohol, you open yourself up to be influenced by, you know, etheric thought forms, entities, spirits, whatever you want to call it, you know? So I choose not to touch alcohol. It just, there's nothing good for, you know, nothing good from it for me personally. You know, if you enjoy having a drink now and then that's fine. But if you're like partying, drinking every day, then that, you know, may want to look at that, that it's also very not good for sexual vitality. Alcohol uh, raises estrogen levels and it's, you know, it's not good for your sexual vitality basically. Okay, Illumined Ways says, how much do you have to make to live in Hawaii struggle-free alone? Well, I went to Hawaii. I spent a winter there. I was broke. I, I did, uh, it's called Woofing. It's, it's, I think it stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. So it's a program where you basically, you work on an organic farm and then they pay, that, that basically pays for your, a place to live, sometimes meals as well. So it was a cool way for me to live in, a, you know, I stayed at this really, really cool retreat, um, on the, the east shore, kind of northeast shore of Maui, outside of uh, Paia. Um, it was a, this really cool place, right? Uh, the, the owners were Tantra teachers, and it was, a, it, was a, it was an interesting time in my life. Hitchhiked around the island and things like that. So I was just kind of a broke hippie, you know, uh, making it work. So if you want to do something, you can make it work. There's always a way.
Lionel Ridge says alcohol only evil spirits, I guess. I mean, I haven't seen anyone who drinking alcohol makes them, you know, <laughs> it, it, it enhances their personality, enhances them. Obviously people get loosened up, maybe they're funnier, but overall, you know, it's just, I don't hang out. You hang out with drunk people, you know, it's just, they're very inhibited. They can't control their, the things they say. It's just, you know, alcohol is a poison. I don't, I choose not to touch it. Xavier says it helps to say out loud. I'm just thinking for the chartering monkey. Yeah. The monkey mind. Rendell Frank. What's up, brother says with your spiritual awakening, how significant are angel numbers to you? Such as 11, 11, 333, And what do they mean? Yeah. So the, the, the spiritual numbers, the angel numbers, triple numbers, quadruple numbers, as far as the meaning, I think, you know, only you can find your own meaning to these things. Um, but for me, it's always been like, whenever I see triple numbers, it's always with a, uh, there's a, there's always something happening. It seems like it's kind of the synchronicity. So pay attention. Like what were you thinking? What were you doing? Right. Uh, when I'm traveling, I see triple numbers and, and quadruple numbers all the time. So, you know, just you set your own meaning for it really. What do I use for skin and hair? Well, I don't really do anything for my skin. I just get sun, uh, you know, use non-toxic products. Most, you know, you go to the, you go to a store, you go to the kind of the beauty section, soaps and cosmetics loaded with poisons, loaded with toxins, xenoestrogens, things will give you cancer and disrupt your hormonal receptors. So use organic products that are natural. If you look at something and it has all these chemicals on it that you can't pronounce, it's probably going to cause problems for you, right? Again, this is the, the systematic poisoning of humans worldwide. Um, so be mindful of that. Whatever you put on your skin, you're basically eating it. It, 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 it goes into your bloodstream. But for my hair, I make my own hair product. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, I think it's two tablespoons of beeswax, three tablespoons of coconut oil, like a teaspoon of bentonite clay, melt that down, mix it together. I got my natural organic hair products. Am I familiar with the seven veils? Uh, I'm not sure. I probably, uh, I, it, it doesn't ring a bell for me. No, I'm not sure. Rion Michael is edging bad. Okay. So edging this pr process of, you know, stimulating yourself, arousing, uh, but not ejaculating, riding the edge, it can be harmful or it can be beneficial. It can be harmful if you don't have any way to, tr to transmute that aroused charge you're building to move the energy out of the genitals. You'll just end up with blue balls, uh, stagnant energies. Your prostate can get kind of swollen with all the fluid. It's not being released, not moving anywhere. So I don't think it's going to kill you but it can cause some issues, right? Too much tension, in the pelvic floor, you're, you become a loaded gun. So, you know, if you go to have sex, it goes right off. So the proper way to edge is to move the energy upwards in the body as you're stimulating yourself, systematically drawing it upwards through the body. And you'll, you'll know that you're doing this because the arousal decreases, the pressure lessens, your erection goes away. And also massaging your pelvic floor with a tennis ball, sitting on a tennis ball, kind of, you know, moving it around that helps to kind of, uh, acupress the prostate and, and kind of, Really, uh, prevent the prostate from becoming kind of inflamed and, and swollen after that edging practice. Am I going to write a book? Yes, I'm actually, I, I mentioned this earlier. I'm meeting up with a friend in Texas next week to write a book together. So I'll, I'll let you know, I'll let you know, let you guys know how it goes when it comes out and everything. <clears throat> Okay. Roy Yun Sachs. How do you think concentration meditation affects the energy of the body? I'm not exactly sure what concentration concentration meditation is. You could maybe share a little brief, you know, summary of it and I can let you know. But if it's something that's just in your head, it may not affect your energy that much. You want, you know, to be able to absorb the mind into your body to really affect the energy channels and the energy flow of your body. <clears throat> Thoughts on ashwagandha? 
Yeah, ashwagandha is awesome. I take ashwagandha. It's a great adaptogen, uh, sexual vitality boosting herb. Okay, Randall Frank says, the retreats you attend, what are the diets that you and the other people adhere to? Pretty much my normal diet. Uh, this retreat I'm going to in July is, it's gonna be you know, seven hours of intense internal alchemy work studying with Michael Wynn. And after that, I need some serious grounding. So I you know, tend to eat like heavy meals, high protein, high fat, healthy fat. Um, yeah, I don't like fast or you know, just eat salads or things like that. When I'm retreating, you know, when you're doing that much energy work, you need grounding. You need some calorie. At least I need some calories in my body. If I'm just eating low, you know, low, uh, like lots of green, just greens, vegetables, and fruits, like I will just get super ungrounded. So I need grounding foods when I'm doing that kind of work. So pretty much my normal diet when I'm when I'm retreating. <clears throat> Lucas Losa says, how do you think the world's going to be after the pandemic? Have you heard about the great reset? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't like to focus on the future, like project into the future too much because it's, it's almost impossible to, you know, to tell the future right now because we're at a time of so many timelines merging so much transformation that you know we see all these predictions and they never come true right so but it's obvious that you know people are kind of waking up to what's been playing out i mean this whole thing about the the cv being created in a lab and things like that's coming out and just the whole bullshit that we've been fed over the past year and a half well really for you know our whole lives but the world's going to be a very different place and i think there's some really great things you know there's talk of this uh, financial abundance rolling out, a complete change of our financial system. I recommend looking into qu quantum financial. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say that, but, you know, uh, investing in things other than the U.S. dollar because it may be crashing completely, you know, cryptocurrencies, silver, you know, things that are a bit more stable and not just based on, you know, numbers on a computer. That's all I'm going to say, I guess. But yeah, the world's going to be, the world already is a very different place and focus on positivity don't go into fear and inject some weird stuff in your body because everything's gonna be fine and uh, again just focus on what you want to create and we are creating a, the new world together so what you focus on what you put your energy into is going to determine what tomorrow looks like <clears throat> xrp oh yeah qfs flare network is all uh flare network has some interesting uh, stuff coming as well. Okay. Oh, always fan rust. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It says, do you have advice for starting up sex again in your relationship after you've had therapy for bad experience in the past? Yeah, it's, you know, I, first of all, having kind of some process of getting to know a self-love practice, right? Doing inner transformational work. You know, this is what my course is all about for men. You know, my, my partner Mariah has a course for women as well, where you have some sort of practice where you're, you know, meditating, getting deep within yourself, looking at the deep layers, the, the things you're holding onto, clearing up these patterns within your body through energy work. It's been the most uh, um, helpful for me because, you know, different therapies can have different efficacies, efficacies, uh, efficiencies. But if you don't address the energetics of the, the pattern, if you're still holding a blockage somewhere, then it's probably going to come back out and you'll, you know, kind of manifest the same situation. But if you go in, look at the blockage, release it, smile to it, uh, you know, create the flow of energy. So it's able to dissolve and create something new, then you will not repeat that pattern basically. Right. And also being not, not, not letting this kind of karma, these old experiences, these old stories keep creating themselves in your present moment because the past is it's over. You know, it's, it's an illusion at this point. And if you keep holding on to things in the past, you will keep creating them in the present. And that's what these blockages kind of tie into is that we have these patterns, uh, these beliefs really on some level and that kind of telling the story and they keep repeating into our current reality because we're actually stuck in the past. So dissolving the past 
and being allowing yourself to be completely open to the present moment, you know, and not expecting what happened in the past to happen, but being mindful of it, you know, will I think help you have a more uh, holistic sexual experience. But also, again, doing the work, cultivating your own sexuality by yourself. First of all, learning to love yourself, learning to love your own body, touch your own body, and bring yourself to to fulfillment within yourself. Then you're in a much better space to share that with a partner. So hopefully that helps. Number one book I would recommend, name's Michael. Um, it depends, depends what, you know, about what. A really great book on kind of sexual Kung Fu practices is Tao Secrets of Love, Cultivating Male Sexual Energy. It's kind of the classic written by Michael Wynn and Montauk Chia. The practices are a bit outdated, but overall, the, you know, it's, it's a pretty solid book. But as far as like, you know, Qigong, one of my favorite books on Qigong is, uh, it's called The Way of Energy by Lam Cam Chuen. Really fantastic book. <clears throat> Derek Trevino says, is your personal weekly schedule exact, is your personal weekly practice schedule exactly what you, okay, is my personal weekly practice exactly what I lay out in my multi-orgasmic man schedule? It's a bit different at this point um, because I, you know, with, with Qigong, with Nagong, with internal practices, it's, there's kind of this, there's stages of development, right? So there comes a time where you can kind of let go of certain practices and move on to next ones. And that, that's kind of more if you're really, really going deep with this stuff. Right. But, um, you know, my, my practice is, 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 is geared more towards like just different, different levels of energy work, I guess now. Right. But overall I do practice a lot of what is in that schedule. That was basically what my daily practice was for many, many years. Right. I'm just kind of exploring other areas of you know, I've, I've studied so many systems. I'm currently studying in other systems, develop, you know, new practices, develop my own practices. So yeah, <laughs> but the, you know, that's, again, that's, I have those recommended schedules in my course, because if you follow that, you will always be working with those practices, of the course and keep developing with everything, integrating all the practices together. And eventually you'll get to know what the different practices do for you. You, you understand, okay, I do this practice. It opens up this channel. It has this effect on my energy. And then you can start to customize your own practice routine, you know, based on what you need in that moment, because we're all unique. Uh, we'll all need a different focus on different types of practices. Some people need more grounding. Some people need more circulation of the energy. Some people need more stillness and building the chi. You know, it's a unique process. Okay, Ian C says, question, practicing sexual cultivation via self-love. Do you suggest the use of male devices like a flashlight? These can be helpful if you resonate, you know, if you feel like it can be a bit more realistic stimulation, I would say. Uh, but those those things, those devices can also be overstimulating. They're not exactly a realistic replication. So, you know, if I say if you want to, go for it. Just don't become too attached to it or whatever, you know. Okay, Mosin says, hi, Jonathan, good to see you again. Good to see you, brother. Uh, when I practice microcosmic orbit, I often end up becoming very aroused and eventually it becomes hard to continue. But in the beginning, my energy is neutral and not aroused. Am I doing it right? Wonder what happens to my energy. This is common. You do some sort of internal practice, you know, like sitting meditative practice and it makes you aroused. Uh, I think it's a sign you have some, you know, healthy levels of sexual energy, so that's good. But yeah, it can be a bit distracting. I recommend that you pull the energy into either the Dan Tien or the kidneys, just breathing from your genitals up into the kidneys or up into the Dan Tien. You can also use the power lock practice, which I teach on YouTube, to quickly draw that energy into your Dan Tien and then the arousal will go away. You can continue with your practice. Jason Nolan says, I saw recently a guy claiming that doing the microcosmic orbit without being sure to hit very specific points in the energy circle can cause chakra blockages and other problems. Any thoughts? I don't, you know, you're always going to hear conflicting things. Everyone's going to say, that's terrible to do. Never do that. You know, and uh, from my experience, no, it's not an issue. Um, I would say, if anything, having too much concentration, too much focus on like, you know, this point and then this point and then this point, too much concentration is actually more likely to cause a blockage. From my experience, right, more likely to, you know, that excess yang, which kind of creates stagnance. Some of the most, you know, a lot of 
the traditional methods of running the orbit were actually first you just spin the Don Tian. You have to build the Don Tian enough, you know, enough Yang Qi in your Don Tian to where you can spin it, you feel it tangibly, and that automatically starts. So first it's like this mini orbit, kind of solar plexus perineum, and then that automatically starts to move the orbit. When you have enough juice, it's gonna it's gonna clear your orbit, right? So don't worry about it. You know, if you I mean if you resonate with that, if you're worried about it, sure. But like from my experience, it's not an issue. Okay, SL says, I can't fully squat. I'm not too flexible. Would that affect having premature ejaculation? It could. Having a lot of tension in this area can, you know, was one of, was one of the causes of premature ejaculation. So I recommend doing stretches, stretching, starting to open up. You know, every man should be able to squat. It's extremely important. That's naturally how we would take a poop, right? And squatting really opens up the pelvic floor. It connects with that earth energy. You know, uh, one of my teachers has a theory that the reason why Western men have so many prostate issues is because we sit on toilets to poop. <laughs> and in Asia, apparently prostate issues are very, very low and they squat on the toilet. So it really opens up that root area, right? So when I take a number two, I, I squat rather than sit. You can, you can get like, they call them squatty potties you put on your toilet, just squat on it. So, you know, that's a helpful thing, right? But yeah, in general, squatting, opening up, you know, that hip flexibility is very important, you know, for being able to loosen up the pelvic floor if, if premature ejaculation is an issue. Okay, Seven Sins says, how can you overcome premature ejaculation? So obviously this is a, and it's kind of a deep subject. Um, <clears throat> and again, I go into depth in some of my course and things, but overall, the main, what, I, what I've seen the main cause of premature ejaculation being is tension. Mental tension or physical tension, they're usually intertwined. So you can't relax the pelvic floor you know, during sex, there's always that involuntary squeezing when your penis is stimulated. Practice relaxing it more and more. Deep breathing into the pelvic floor, progressive relaxation, reverse Kegels, practicing stimulation very, very slowly, you know, staying relaxed, doing squats. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of number one is that hypertension. The other thing is too much energy focused in the genitals, which kind of goes with tension as well, right? So working with the microcosmic orbit, too much focus in the genitals. This is a big thing, especially if you know you have premature ejaculation, you kind of identify as being a premature ejaculator. And when you go to have sex or self-stimulate, you are you have that fear, you're like, oh, it's going to happen. And you start to become very focused on your genital area. The more you focus on it, the more it actually moves more energy there, right? So being able to relax and fuel the rest of your body. Um, so practice self-stimulating very, very slowly and staying as relaxed as possible, breathing as deeply as possible, like very slight self-stimulation, not just, you know, hammering it. Right. So, you know, work with that, work with bringing the energy through the body. Again, this is a, it's kind of a comprehensive training to overcome premature ejaculation. That's why I get into depth in my course, but you know, hopefully that helps. David Greens from Mexico. Awesome. Glad you find it helpful, brother. Okay, Lionel Ridge says, what is your current formula for staying healthy? Um, rest, relaxation, happiness, doing things that make you feel good, having fun in your life. I think mean, that's you know number one, right, is the vibrational state you're in, right? If your diet's great, if you're taking all the right supplements, whatever, doing the right exercises, but you're stressed out and you are unhappy in your life, you're still going to have, you know, you're going to have some health issues, right? So happiness stress, relaxation, staying parasympathetic is very, very important. Stress is one of the main causes of disease. Hydration is important. High quality water. Don't drink tap water laced with neurotoxins, chlorine, fluoride, again, chemical castrating chemicals, right? Um, <clears throat> healthy diet, spending time in nature, get out of the city. The earth is this fertile, juicy, uh, birthing all this life. The earth is a, is a sex goddess, right? This incredibly healthy, abundant, virile being. So being in the energy of the earth's, you know, the earth's energy field, which you're kind of cut off from when you're sitting in a concrete cage all day, every day, right? So get out in nature, absorb the energy of nature, practice Qigong, keep your energy channels open and balanced, you know, have a relaxed mind, keep playing sleep, take your, take your vitamins, whatever. And, you know, that's my, uh, my formula for, for staying healthy, basically.
What's my take on veganism? Uh, it's not for everyone. There's no single type of diet that's best for everyone. Some people run into some serious health issues on the vegan diet because they simply cannot you know, fully absorb the nutrients of plants. If you have to take a, a cupboard full of supplements because you're not getting the nutrients from your diet, clearly that diet is not effective, right? I tried the vegan thing, didn't work for me. Everyone, you know, everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own body type and what works for them, but it's good not to become a, uh, a dietary religious fundamentalist, right? Soul immortal. Awesome. Glad it helped brother. Bobcat says, "Has you ever have you ever tried using cold packs on the testicles to increase sperm count? Do you feel like this is beneficial to cultivation?" Yeah, there's a lot of science suggesting that cold, you know, keeping the testicles cool basically helps sperm production. So sometimes when it's when it's warm, basically you'll notice like if your testicles are really kind of, you know, how they naturally kind of rise and fall. If they're really really loose and like far away from the body, then that may be a sign that they're too hot. So when that happens, I'll get a cup of ice water and you know, soak the boys in there for a while. As far as like walk, walking around with an ice pack on there, you know, I haven't done that, but it, I'm sure it's beneficial if you feel like, you know, rigging that up. King of Dominicans, good to see you again, brother. Yeah, it's a wealth, greatest wealth transfer in human history. Yeah, so what we're potentially seeing is <laughs> complete abundance coming through for all of us because we've been basically slaves to a handful of a few groups who've been controlling the planet for thousands of years. You know, all this, you know, they have all this wealth, all this mass amounts of money, more than they could possibly spend. And potentially we're seeing this transfer of wealth to everyone, to where everyone's being abundant on planet through a uh, quantum financial system, potentially through cryptocurrencies and things. It's I mean, who knows what's really going to happen, but, you know, I think that there's, it's, uh, we have an interesting ride ahead, right? There's going to be some interesting truths revealed to the world, and a lot of people are going to have their minds blown. Okay, Mighty, mighty Conquero. Do you follow more the Taoist approach or the Tantric? I definitely resonate more with the Taoist approach. You know, I've, you know, I've explored so many different paths. I went deep down yoga, Kundalini yoga, uh, kind of Tantric systems, um, shamanic systems, but... For me, the Taoist practices are very embodied. They're the most kind of body centric, uh, stressing harmony and balance. You know, some of these other paths get really into, again, I was talking about this escapism, like you have to get out of your body, just send your energy upwards, open up your crown, shoot out, get, get back to heaven because earth's a hell realm. But I don't believe that. It's, it's kind of this escapism, right? The Taoist approach is like bring all that bliss of heaven into your earth, into your body on earth and grounded on earth. So we're bridging heaven and earth and creating harmony and balance here. It's all in the present moment is intertwining heaven and earth is a polarity. Um, and when you're kind of, uh, what's the word here? Overly emphasizing one of these aspects, you're going to have an imbalance, right? Form and formless are always, it's this breath of this intertwining, you know, form the, the earth realm, earth energy, it rises up, converting into heaven, uh, into the formless and the formless is constantly coming back down to form. So it's not just a one-way float, right? Um, but yeah, overall, I, I, I do like the Taoist approach more. That's most the, mostly what I'm using and teaching is Taoist techniques. Okay. Can you describe how does the testicle breathing work and how often should you do it? Testicle breathing is basically moving the essence of the energy of the sperm, the jing qi, uh, out of the testicles. Because what happens when you're building up all this sexual energy, if you're practicing semen retention, you're you know holding, you're you're building up your pure sexual gene energy. It it can become a bit congested. You don't want to just leave it in your balls or it, it, it just pulls all your energy down there and you start focusing on, you get really horny, you get really lustful, right? So the testicle breathing, you're taking that energy and moving it through the body, moving it through the microcosmic orbit. You can move it through the, through the various organs, the heart, the different chakras basically, right? And as it moves, it transforms, it changes the form. It turns this raw kind of, you know, sexual thick energy into something more light. You connect it with the heart. It becomes this expansive, uh, amplifying energy. So 
that's kind of the theory is that you're, you're, you're kind of refining and circulating this energy, enhancing all the processes of your body, circulating it. And <clears throat> as far as how often you should do it, I recommend doing it every day. If you're practicing retention, if you're building up sexual energy, then do testicle breathing every day. And this is also a foundation for learning to circulate your aroused sexual energy so you can have non-ejaculatory orgasms. Okay, L unit says regarding solo cultivation, a lot of the techniques are more subtle than overt ejaculation, feels less satisfying when used to regular ejaculation. How do you know when you're done? So the thing is, is that we're often addicted to overstimulating experiences. If something's not like a 100, you know, our, our nervous system is so overstimulated that we just don't even register more subtle experiences. So yes, there's a process of kind of rewiring yourself, reconditioning yourself. That's why I teach so much Qigong and meditation practices in my course, because it starts to resensitize you to the more subtle sensations, which you can start to then amplify into, into experiences, which are much more powerful, much more fulfilling than an ejaculatory orgasm. The ejaculatory orgasm, you know, yeah, it's intense, but it lasts five to 10 seconds. It's very unsustainable. It's, it's very unsatisfying actually. So when you can, with what you're basically doing uh, with non-ejaculatory sex, experiencing the valley orgasms, you're taking that five to 10 seconds of intensity and stretching it out to more, you know, several minutes or hours. So yeah, in the beginning, it's a bit less intense in the moment, but you're sustaining that for a much greater period of time. And there's no crash at the end. So you can do it for, you know, as often as you want, as much as you want. And this rely, you know, this requires you being okay with having a high level of desire and arousal in the body. That, that's, that's a problem for a lot of men. They are not comfortable feeling desire, feeling arousal. They feel their sexual energy starts to get activated. They see a, a stimulating image and it's like, oh, I don't like this itchy feeling. You know, I've got to ejaculate this out of my body. So when you open up your body to hold this arousal and transform it, let it something turn into something that drives you, turn it into something that makes you creative and loving, then you become very comfortable having this heightened level of energy. So it's really grounding and opening up your body to be able to handle this basically. Ultimo Mago Val Diviezo says, what's a good marijuana intake regimen for you? Terrence McKenna said only Sundays. Yeah, I don't recommend doing it more than uh, once a week, maybe twice a week, more than that. And you're just living in a fog. You're living in a kind of hangover state. Uh, marijuana, cannabis, it can be a valuable ally for people. You know, again, I, I had it every day for weird years because I loved it. it. I loved the way it made me feel, but it also gave me a lot of brain fog and made me really lazy and unmotivated. And it also, it affects your hormones. It affects your androgens, your androgen receptors. Um, so I don't recommend having it, you know, maybe it's kind of your own discernment. You know, for me, I would often go very, very long periods of time without it. Sometimes I'll have it every now and then just as like a little something, you know, social occasions, whatever. But I definitely don't like to have it regularly. It also, you know, makes men, uh, <laughs> uh, damages sperm for men, makes them too lazy to, to move. Right. <laughs> Randall Frank says, if you're doing sexual Kung Fu, but your partner isn't, can you still have an enjoyable experience or would it be better if both partners did it? You certainly still have an enjoyable experience. Um, you know, I, when I was first learning this, you know, I, I was with, I think two or three partners maybe who they weren't doing the practices, but you know, I was still having great experiences. And especially if your partner's a woman, women, women are very intuitive. They're, they're very naturally tuned into this more embodied full body experience of sex and orgasm. So it's men that really need to uh, up their game sexually to match the sexual power of women. Right. So, but yeah, don't worry about it too much. You're, you can, you can do the circulation yourself, things like that. Yes. It can be more powerful if both, both partners are doing it, but it can be kind of a rare, it can be kind of rare to find a partner who does do it. You know, I met my, my partner, Mariah, and uh, she wasn't doing any of this stuff, but gradually she became very interested in, in practicing sexual Kung Fu herself. And, you know, now we have a very powerful union together. Okay, I'm gonna lose my Instagram feed in one minute. It cuts me off at an hour, I'm not sure why. Haley Hay, is it also beneficial to do semen retention in the early 20s? I heard in Dow's text that it should start from the 30s on, is this correct? Well, I think my understanding is that it's the most important from your 30s on, but now in the modern world, men are so sexually overstimulated and recklessly ejaculating that by the time they hit their twenties, they're already depleted. This was the case for me, right? So yes, I think it's very valuable for men 
at the age of 20 to start being mindful of their ejaculations and start regulating this at least. Yes, reverse Kegels do help loosen the pelvic floor. Shooting blanks, low sperm count, infertility, uh, ejaculating too often, uh, eating food that's poisoned, which most processed foods, most foods available to us in supermarkets are, you know, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, the water we drink, the air we breathe, so many factors that, again, talking about this chemical castration of everyone on the planet is becoming infertile. Oh, losing my feed. Oop. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to pull my Instagram feed right back up. <laughs> It is hot here, guys. It's like 100 degrees today, Fahrenheit, which is, I guess, not unusual where I live, but it's a little early in the year for that. It's supposed to be like 107 next week, major heat wave. But I've got an ice tub set up. Uh, there's a deep freezer at this house I moved into, so I filled it up with water and turned it into an ice bath. It's pretty sweet. Okay. We're back. Where's that? Okay, Derek Trevino, really love your Qigong practices and noticed a lot of benefits. I would like to be an instructor. Do you have a certification course? If not, can you recommend one for me? So I am, I've been thinking about doing a, an instructor training, whether that's sexual Kung Fu or Qigong in general. Um, all you know about that, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be announcing it if I do that. Uh, as far as who I would recommend, I mean, the thing with Qigong is it's so, it's not, it, it, how do you really regulate it? How do you really, you know, quantify who's a qualified Qigong teacher or not? Because from what I've experienced, 80% of people teaching Qigong are just teaching physical exercises, you know, slow motion movements, which, which is great, you know, but it's not quite the essence of Qigong, which is qi circulation. That takes a bit more uh, in-depth focus, right? Uh, certain quality. So um, some teachers I recommend, I will say, Scott Meredith, Bruce Francis system is pretty good. Damo Mitchell has an excellent system. He's a bit rigid in his, his stuff, but yeah. Um, Michael Wynn. But yeah, I'll let you guys know if I do decide, if I do do a teacher certification program. Oh, hey, Mariah, my, my beautiful goddess joined. <laughs> I don't know who, who, who wants to be certified as a Qigong teacher, or sexual Kung Fu instructor. Let me know, you know, if there's enough interest. I, again, I was kind of thinking about this last night. It'd be really fun to do this because the world needs more people teaching this work. Seven sins. All right, you are in the course. Basically, just practice the basic unaroused transmutation practice. Yeah. So you know, get through the whole course. Especially, there's some stuff I'm adding, which is at you know, it's it's actually beyond the 12 weeks of the course. It's actually more than a 12 week course. It's there's a lot of uh, um, content in there, but you know, keep practicing with it. Um, relaxation though is number one. Relaxing your mind and your body, and you know, guiding the energy. It takes time to learn this. It takes time to practice it. Caprice Williams says, what made you begin learning about sexual energy in general? Well, um, I had my first full body orgasm when I was about five years old. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, you know, uh, I've always been very fascinated with sex and, and orgasm. And to me, it was always like, it was, it was, it was almost like a religious experience, you know, like it just felt so amazing. But in my teenage years, it's like, I, I guess because I was ejaculating so much, it just became much less satisfying. It became more and more unsatisfying. It's like, why, why isn't this as satisfying as it used to be, right? When I was first having orgasms, I was just like, whoa. And what I realized is because I was drained because I was depleting my my sexual battery every day, right? And, you know, hearing about, so I'm kind of all over the place with this. Oh, I should probably explain having a full body orgasm at the age of five. So <laughs> I was on my, uh, I was sick. Actually, I had like a fever or something, right? And I was sleeping on my my couch, my parents' couch, and I was and I had this dream, and I had this sexual full body orgasm. This dream, I can't explain. You know, I'm five years old. I'm like, whoa, there's this weird sensation down there, and it's just like amazing and pulsing. And I actually completely forgot about this until I had my first full body orgasm after that, when I was you know my mid twenties, 
So spontaneous thing there. But again, uh, I was getting into my spiritual path, right? I was, I was, I was meditating. I was practicing yoga. I was learning about developing my spiritual path after I kind of had my Kundalini awakening. And for me, it was like, where does sex tie into all this? Because again, sex was always kind of a religious experience for me, but it was like, how can I integrate my sexual energy into my spiritual path and my energy cultivation? And that kind of led me on a quest to, you know, I started learning about Tantra and things, but I didn't really learn anything practical until I found Montauk Chia's work. And then, you know, I found a teacher to study with, studied with Michael Wynn, studied with several other teachers. And I realized, wow, our, our basically our sexual frustrations, our lack of depth of sexuality, all these sexual issues, everyone has sexual issues. This is one of the main problems in the world. If we could revol- resolve this, the entire world would transform. And it became apparent to me that this was very important. And there just wasn't a lot of people teaching it, right? And there's still not relatively, right? And I was like, okay, I'm going to start sharing this. And that's what got me into you know, doing this. Rayon Saxes. Good to see you, Jonathan. Is there any monastery or center that teaches everything about energies, chakras, consciousness? I want to learn everything to live it right. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of people teaching this work. There's a lot of places you can go and study, but I will say, don't just, I think it's good to study with different people, right? Um, this is what I did. You know, I studied really in depth. Michael Wynn was one of my main teachers, but, but eventually I started like, what else are people teaching? You know, because you don't want to take on someone's, uh, uh, rigidities, you know, someone's weaknesses, right? So I think it's good to learn from multiple teachers and things like that. So, you know, call it out though, call out for it, say, Hey, universe, guide me to a teacher to learn this stuff and, you know, follow your intuition. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to jump off here in a bit. I'm uh, meeting up with some friends tonight, but I'm gonna answer a few more questions. We're all one says, has anyone ever felt like they don't fall in love anymore? Romantic love. I think it's an interesting question. You know, we're, we're, there's this interesting kind of transformation, really manipulation of humankind where this, this tech based, uh, matrix based reality of, you know, being in our heads, all this in sensory overwhelming, you know, device, electronic devices, you know, stay home, get your VR set and, you know, plug into the matrix is, you know, one agenda that's kind of being pushed. And so, it's this, this kind of agenda of disconnecting from that, which makes us truly human, which is our heart, which is our feelings, uh, our, our creation ability and our, you know, I don't know, kind of go on, on something here, but it, it, it's an interesting question though. And it's something I'm, I'm realizing as well. And also we've been so distracted and, tr- you know, people have been trying to put us into fear for the past, I mean, really for our entire lives, but it's obviously accelerated the past year and a half uh, that most people can't really calm down and get into their feeling body. They're just distracted by all this fear porn, all this anxiety, like, oh, this is happening, this is happening. And and obviously, you know, it's a control system here because humans who are constantly distracted in fear, fight or flight mode, all this news, all this, you know, BS coming out them, they don't have time to sit down, meditate, and realize that they are incredibly powerful beings, develop their energy. Because if we all realized how powerful we are, we would not need control systems telling us what to do. We would not, you know, the world will completely transform. That's really what's happening right now is we are realizing that we've been fed bullshit about our history, bullshit about what, you know, pharmaceutical medicine. Um, this is a time of the cleansing of the planet. Carlos Kundalini, good to see you, brother. Thank you. The artwork behind me. I got it on Amazon. <laughs> Shocker Beats says, how do you feel about vivid sexual dreams with someone you were extremely attracted to? Is this just a dream or something more? It's probably something more. It's probably kind of as, you know, you're having this astral sex with them. You're connecting with them sexually in the astral plane. It's what we do. You know, our at night, our personality goes to sleep and our really our subconscious, which is our super conscious, goes and plays in the astral realm, which is much more liquid and fluid than this, you know, peanut butter physical reality we play in. So, you know, you're experiencing that. 
And, we, and when you have those like really, really vivid lifelike dreams, then it's, it's something more than just a kind of, you know, processing stuff type of dream, I would say. Okay, guys, I got to jump off um, again. Doing a free online training next week, next Friday, July 2nd, Male Sexual Mastery Secrets. Going to be teaching how to overcome premature ejaculation, how to have non ejaculatory orgasms last for hours in bed, uh, how to have a more, you know, holistic experience of sexual energy, and how to channel your sexual energy into creating abundance, purpose, and passion in your life. So sign up for that through this YouTube video, through the link in my Instagram bio. I'll see you guys there. Um, I may not be going live next week. We'll see. I'm going to be traveling. So I'll let you guys know, but I might be able to. We'll see. Uh, take care, guys. Thanks for joining. Have a great weekend. Keep yourself charged up. Cultivate your chi. Spend time in nature. And uh, we'll see you soon.